Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can do the vector product, or cost product as some people call it, between two general vectors, A and B. I'm assuming that you've already watched the previous video where I introduced you to the vector product of two vectors. So, with this one, we've got the vector A with components A1, A2, A3. And for the vector B, we've got components B1, B2, B3. So how do we go about doing the vector product between the two vectors? Well, for A cross B, it's going to be the first vector multiplied with the next vector. Now if we expand this in the usual way, taking A1i and multiplying it with each of these three terms here, then what we're going to get is the following. So for the first one, it's going to be A1 times B1, but notice it's going to be I cross I. And then it'll be A1, B2 with I crossed with J, and so on. And then if we go on and do A2J multiplied by each of these components, then the result that we get is this one. And similarly, if we do A3K multiplied with each of the components there, then we get this line. Now, I'm assuming that you are familiar with these results here for I crossed with I, I crossed with J, and so on. If not, as I say, do go back and check out these results because we discussed them in the previous video. So you should be familiar with I crossed with I, J crossed with J, and K crossed with K. They're parallel vectors, and the result I showed you was zero. So I crossed with I, J crossed with J, K crossed with K all come to zero. So that's going to take out those particular terms. We also discussed the fact that if you have I crossed with J, I crossed with J was K. Now also remember that if we reverse these round, we got the negative value. So J crossed with I, which we've got over here, is minus K. So that becomes minus K. And for I crossed with K, that turned out to be minus J. And so K crossed with I, this one down here, will be J. And finally, we've got J crossed with K and K crossed with J. J crossed with K was I. And that means then that K crossed with J would be minus I. So simplifying these results then, what we get is this. And if we now group together the I terms, the J terms, and the K terms, then you're going to find you get this. Now there seems to be a nice pattern to this. And in fact, it is a well-known pattern structure. If we were to look at the determinant of this setup where we just write i, j, k across the top and then the first vector a having its components a1, a2, a3 followed by the second vector b with its components b1, b2, b3 then I'm assuming that you're familiar with how we work out determinants then this becomes i times the determinant of A2, A3, B2, B3, this block in here. And then we have minus J here, and we look at the determinant A1, A3, B1, B3. And then for the final one, we've got K multiplied by the determinant A1, A2, B1, B2. And remember, to work out a determinant like this, it's A2, B3 minus A3, B2. It's the leading diagonal multiplied together minus the trailing diagonal. These two elements multiplied together. So what we get then is this. And 
can you see that this is exactly the same result that we got up here? So by working out this determinant here, what we get is A cross with B. So this is a nice way then of working out A cross B rather than having to go through all of this method. Now I've got an example here that you might like to have a go at. I'm going to run through it anyway, but uh, just give you a moment to pause the video if you'd like to uh, try it. We've got the vector A with components minus 2, 1, minus 3, and the vector B with components 3, 4, minus 5. And we've got to find A cross B then. So to find A cross B, let's just put this up here, A cross with B, just do squiggles underneath those because I can't write them in bold. Then we set up our determinant with i, j and k across the top here. And then we've got the components of a, minus 2, 1, minus 3. And then for b we've got 3, 4, minus 5. Okay, so in the usual way then, following this method here, what we're going to get is going to be equal to i times the determinant 1 minus 3, 4 minus 5. So let's just put that up here. We've got 1 minus 3, 4 minus 5, and that's multiplied with i. Then we do negative, and we're going to multiply j with the determinant minus 2, minus 3, 3, minus 5. Okay, so we put that in, minus 2, minus 3, 3, and minus 5. And then we've got to add to that the determinant that we multiply with k, and that's going to be minus 2, 1, 3, 4. Okay, minus 2, 1, 3, 4. And so working out those values here, for the first one here, we've got minus 5, minus, minus 12. So minus 5 plus 12, that gives us 7i. For the next one, we've got 10 minus, minus 9. So that's going to come to 19. And then we've got this negative out here. So that's going to be minus 19. Minus 19j then. And for the k component here, this determinant is going to be minus 8, minus 3. So you've got minus 11 there. Minus 11k. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea then how we can quickly do the cross product or vector product between two vectors using the determinant method. All right?